Do you remember the last time you went on a hike on an unpaved trailway? Have you been to any in or around Bismarck? I love walking on both trails at Sleepy Hollow Park and Bill Mills Nature Trail, <clears throat> but both are vastly different. Why? Because trail building has very lengthy directions, I wanted to break it down and instead focus on one of the first steps, deciding the height and width of trails. There are four factors that decide the height and width. I will break down each of those factors, deciding um, each of those factors and how they will affect the decision of the trail dimension. So the first one is knowing the expected form of traveling the trail is going to be used for because it determines the speed. So if it had horseback riders, it would need at least to be around 10 feet tall and very wide, of course. Um, easiest is hikers. They can just walk. Uh, it just depends on the size of the group. And a middle is bikers. And that's very important because of the speed they will be going. Um, <clears throat> aside, oh, okay. aside from the type and speed, being aware of the amount of guests is very important for the width. Um, higher amount of guests require a wider trail. So the location will be very important to know. The more desolate an area, the fewer users expected. If a trail were to be near or in a community, ease of access would allow a higher guest rate. Uh, the difficulty of a trail could also determine the amount of guests. A steep trailway would likely lure experienced hikers, deterring the general public. The location of where the trail is and the distance of getting maintenance when needed is an important relationship to factor. So a trail high up on a mountain peak with a ranger station miles away might not be able to get as much trail maintenance as needed for a thin trail. A desolate one could be wider, so that way you could be left alone without being mowed too much. And um, yeah, it can be thinner throughout the year if there's access to constant maintenance. Um, so the two I had were um, kind of like an open area. This one required less maintenance. And then as opposed to something like this, which is a little more bushy, you can tell it's going to need a lot more, especially with the vegetation. Um, so the two trails, as you can see, um, Bill Mills Nature Park Trail. That's actually right behind them, between the Missouri and the zoo. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's back there. It's very wide. Multiple people can go there, and it's not too far from the Parks and Recreation Department. And Sleepy Hollow, which is made for biking, which is kind of funny because it's so small. Where's <laughs> so that then? That's by Divide. Um, yeah, way up there. Um, it's on where they do those little theater yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah, that one's going to need more maintenance. So unfortunately, my only experience with trail building was marking the trails with ribbons. I also wanted to learn through this demonstration so I could see from the point of view of, of a beginner. Natural vegetation, trail guests, and maintenance affect the decision on how, how, how high and wide a trail should be. Okay. So yeah, you can kind of notice why the trails were built the way they were.